Ephesians chapter 2. The book of Ephesians chapter 2. And I'll just read the first verse where I would um, take my speak on today. And it reads thus, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. And for reference, Colossians chapter 2 and verse 13. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 13. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath it quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. The Living Bible for Colossians chapter 2 verse 13 says, You were dead in sins, and your sinful desires were not yet cut away. Then he gave you a share in the very life of Christ, for he forgave all your sins. Today I like to speak to you on the subject, the transforming power of Jesus. The transforming power of Jesus. To transform is to undergo or experience change. Transfer transformation is a marked change in nature, form, or appearance. I'd like to take you into three aspects or stages. Not the only one, but the major ones of the Christian life. It's comprised of three major changes. And this scripture in Ephesians chapter 2 is where I'm going to focus on today because that is the description of the, the area in which I take taking you today. The three major stages in the Christian life is the past, the present, and the future. The past, the present, and the future. The quickening is not physical as it says, and you have the quickened. It is not a physical quickening, but a spiritual quickening. And the death from which we were quickened was not a physical, is not a physical death, but a spiritual death. We were dead in trespasses and sins, not physically, but spiritually speaking. However, when the Lord God commanded Adam in the garden not to eat of the fruit of the tree of good and evil, Adam disobeyed God. And as a result, God pronounced death on the human, on humanity. Adam representing the human race. And it was both a spiritual and a physical death. Spiritual in the sense that Adam lost his relationship with the Lord, which is a sign of spiritual death. And also from that time, when God pronounced death on the human race, man started the process of death or dying. So the interpretation there is that in dying thou shalt surely die. In dying thou shalt surely die. From the time that God pronounced death on the human race, on Adam, man began to die physically. And man was dying spiritually. But after man sinned through Adam or the fall, man has always tried to get back to God through or by his own means. Because man could th thought that they could work up their own righteousness and their own holiness. But they fail. Man has tried reformation. And reformation is the process by which man thinks that he can change himself. 
Man thought that he can be morally good. The Reformation was good, but not good enough to bring back man into relationship with God. There was no good enough that we could pay to bring, bring us to salvation. The Reformation, and there were some churches that were formed in those days. In the 16th century, the Reformation brought about the establishment of the Reformed and Protestant churches. But church going and church or religion cannot make man a Christian or a changed person. You can go to church and yet not be a Christian. You can go to church and yet be lost. Man tried confirmation. And confirmation is trying to live morally good. And by church rules. This is trying to live the Christian life by our own effort. No criticism to churches that necessarily to use the word confirmation. But it's not scriptural. It cannot work. We have to be transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. You can confirm yourself to the rules and the laws of the church. But that would not make you a Christian. You must be born again. The Bible says that all our righteousness are filthy rugs. Whatever we try to do. Whatever we try to work up. And we all do fade as a leaf. And our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. So there is no righteousness that we can work up. There is no church holiness that can take us into God's heaven. Some centuries ago, the Lord revealed his truth to his servant Martin Luther. Not Martin Luther King, but Martin Luther, a great minister of the gospel. And this revelation was that man is justified by faith and faith alone and not by works. It's not by works of righteousness which we can do that we're going to inherit the eternal kingdom. But by faith in Jesus Christ. Based on the word of God which says for by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God not of works lest any man should boast. You see if we can work our way to salvation then we become our own savior. And we will not need the Lord Jesus Christ as our savior. But there is nothing that we can do in ourselves to make us worthy to be accepted in God's presence. Within the context of Ephesians chapter 2 the three major stages of the Christian life, the past, the present, and the future. I'd like to deal with them individually. The past. Verse 1 says that you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. The Bible declares in Romans 6 23 that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. You see, we call man sin. Death, spiritually and physically, became a curse to mankind. We die because of sin. Spiritually and physically we die. Man out of touch with the Lord is in sp spiritual death and spiritually dying. Sinful walk, walk in sin. Verse 2 says that we walked in sin where in time past you walked according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air that now worketh in the children of disobedience. We walked according to the course of this world which is worldliness. According to the prince of the power of the air who is Satan. Satan is the prince of the power of the air. We were under Satan's control. This was part of our past. Satan masterminded us. 
The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. That same past, which all of us have passed through, is still working today. As we are seeing today, in today's time, the children or young people who are walking or living in disobedience to parents and to law and order, to government. They're still living in disobedience and control by the prince of the power of the air, which is Satan. Children controlled by the devil and who are carrying out his evil, his, his Satan's evil deeds. Jesus spoke to a certain sect of religious people and described Satan and his works by saying, Ye are of your father, the devil. And the, word, the devil and the lust of your father will ye do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh, he speaketh a lie. He speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of lies. So today we see young people going around committing these atrocities. They are controlled by the devil. They are controlled by an evil spirit in today's time. How could anyone look on a human being like themselves and take a knife and put it into their throat or into their back or into their bodies? How could man? It's an evil that is in these days. The evil that is scarring people, causing people to go around and shoot one another like we are fowls and sheep and goats. It's a work of the enemy in these last times. It's an evil work. And the church is going to stand up and pray and ask God to control the evil that is so loose in these cities. They started in Birmingham last night again. Somebody got shot, a 23-year-old. And this rampant here in London. But God is in control. God is in control. And 2 Corinthians, 2 Chronicles 7, 14 says, If my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will heal their land and forgive their sins. So the church need to rise up. It's not time for us to sleep and pray against these evil forces that is rampant in our, in our, in our society. 50 plus people already killed for the year in the city. We got to pray. We got to rise up. Men also have evil desires. The Bible says that we had all our conversation. And the conversation does not mean that speaking. It means manner of life. In times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature, verse 3, the children of wrath, even as others. This describes us before we met the Lord. This is part of our past. Lust in these days have been taken to the extreme end. The Bible refers to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. And the Bible says it is not of the Father, but it's of the world. Men and women, boys and girls have become worldly. And they have allowed the lust of the eyes to control them. And the lust of the flesh to control them. Men would rather go after strange things. And strange behavior rather than submit to the authority of the Bible and the word of God. The Bible also refers to a lust that is contrary to nature. Homosexual and lesbian life is becoming the norm in our society. But God gave over Sodom and Gomorrah to a reprobate mind. And they did that which was not conceivable even to human conception. But God is able to change Amen. things if you give him a chance Amen. in your life. Amen. Spiritual destitution. We're spiritually destitute. We were abandoned and empty and deserted, forsaken. In, in, in the true sense of the word. 
The Bible says in verse 12, verse 12, we were without Christ. We were being aliens in verse 12. We were far from the commonwealth of Israel, or foreigners, strangers from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, and having no hope. We had no hope. In this world, we were just living. We were just existing before Christ came into our lives. We had no hope. And we without God in the world. What miserable life can you and I experience when we don't have God in our lives? All your life can be miserable. The songwriter says, if you want joy, real joy, wonderful joy, let Jesus come into your heart. I tell you, my unsaved friends, Christ will make the difference in your life there's no joy in the world the bible said that the pleasures of sin is only for a season they would not last forever after you've come from your dance and after you've come from your relationship and otherwise you're still empty but jesus gives you something to last to satisfy he's the only one that can satisfy if you want joy real joy wonderful joy let jesus come into your heart Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. 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 So today I introduce you to the man who gives real joy. The woman at the well said, Come see a man which told me all these things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Yes, she have dealt with other men. And she was not satisfied because the other men took advantage of her and her situation. But thank God that she met a man among men. She met a man among men. She met a man among men. She came, she came and she said, give me this water that I come not to thirst again. He said, woman, the water that I shall give you shall be in you. A well of water springing up into everlasting life. Christ has a water to satisfy you. Christ is the water of life. If you want real life, take a drink of water of salvation today and I'm telling you that you will not thirst again because he will give you satisfaction hallelujah whereas you you take a drink or you take a, a good time or you take a, a pass a night with someone you might feel good for the season but you'll have to come back to get another chance again and it will not satisfy you but Jesus will satisfy you he will fulfill your longings. He will give you joy. Real joy. If you want joy, real joy. Let Jesus come into your heart. Hallelujah. 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 Having no hope in this world is a terrible state to be in. And without God in the world, the Bible says that we, we God, without, without God we are all men most miserable. No wonder some people today are miserable. They're getting older and older. And they're speaking obscene languages. They're cursing and swearing. Some of them on the dying bed. They're cursing and swearing because they never took God in their youth, youthful days. They know nothing about God. And so they curse and they swear. Oh, but when you know God, you can say, Lord, I'm coming home. Amen. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! You can die contented knowing that you're going home to be the world of the Lord. But when you live your days in miserable and just go to church uh, and have no communication with God. Your sins are not forgiven when you face uh, that eternity. Some people run out, run out of their beds. Uh, some people run uh, from death. But you cannot, you and I cannot run from death. We cannot hide from death. We cannot escape death. Because it is appointed unto man once to die. And after that, the judgment. So this was our past. I come into the present. But the grace and mercy and love of Jesus Hallelujah. has brought us in our present state. Hallelujah. We are now changed. Amen. We are now transformed. Amen. Hallelujah. By the blood of the Lamb. Psalm says, I've been changed. Amen. I'm a newborn. Amen. And my life has been rearranged. Hallelujah. What a difference it makes since the Lord came and saved in my heart. Amen. Oh yes, sir. I've been changed. Amen. When we compare our present with our past, the Bible says, and such were some of you, but you are washed, hallelujah, for the blood of Jesus. We are sanctified or set apart. We are washed.
washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, but he are justified or declared righteous in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Spirit of our God. We are changed. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm a newborn now and my life has been rearranged. What a difference it makes since the Lord came and said, in my heart, oh yes, I've been changed. The Bible says, and such were some of us. Yeah, we did one and everything. Oh, we live wickedly. We live ungodly. But thank God today for the change. Thank God. Somebody says, oh, happy day. That fits my choice. I'll be my Savior and my God. He taught me how to watch and pray. And live rejoicing every day. It was a happy day when Jesus washed our sins away. And the Bible declares, on the blood of Jesus Christ, his son cleanses us from all sin. Thank God for the transformation. Thank God for the change. Amen. And the Bible says, that, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All creation, all things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. Thank God for the change. Those who have experienced the change, lift your hand and give God praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah for the change. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm not what I used to be. I may not be what I should be, but I'm not what I used to be. I have changed. I have transformed the power of the Holy Ghost and the power of God. Hallelujah for the change. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank God today for the blood of Jesus. Amen. Our past is being forgiven and is under the blood. Amen. Thank God for the blood of Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 5 says, The saving grace of Jesus hath quickened us together with Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, yes. by grace, uh, ye are saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And verse 6 says, uh, And hath raised us up together, yes. and made us sit together with Christ, Amen. in heavenly places, Amen. in Christ Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. We have been coming from a life of degradation yes. to a life of promotion Amen. with Jesus Christ. Amen. We are now sitting with Jesus Christ in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Thank God for bringing us from that degrading state into a state of, of commendation Amen. through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The transforming grace of Jesus had brought about in the life of the Gentile believer of which we are. He had brought a transformation into our lives. Hallelujah. And verse 13 and 14 says, but now in Christ Jesus, we're talking about our present state. Yes. But now in Christ Jesus, yes. ye who sometimes were far off yes. are made nigh Amen. by the blood of Christ. Hallelujah. For he is our peace. Yes. And who had both, who had made both one. Yes. That whom we have become one with Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. We were separated from Christ. Yes. We were enemies of the cross of Christ. We were enemies of Christ and the things of God. But now God has made us since the transformation has made us one with Christ and have broken down the middle wall of partition, of, of partition between us. Hallelujah. Yes. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself a claim one human soul making peace. Amen. So we have peace with God Hallelujah. through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank God for the middle wall of partition that have been broken down before time the priests had to represent yes. the people. But now we can go into God yes. for ourselves. Yes. We don't have to go to the way of a priest, yes. but we can approach God yes. for ourselves. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. We don't have to offer lambs and tap the dogs and young pigeons. Yes. Jesus yes. paid it all. Yes. Hallelujah for our sins. He paid it on the cross of Calvary over 2,000 years ago. It was some weeks ago we celebrated Easter to, say, to demonstrate to the world that Jesus died.
died on the cross uh, over 2,000 years ago to bring us this great uh, and wonderful salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we can approach God for ourselves. We don't have to wait for a priest. God, a priest used to go in once every year to offer sacrifice. But thank God, Jesus Christ entered once and for all into the inner court, into the holy of holies. And now we can go into God for ourselves. Uh, and we can say, Abba Father, Oh Father, my Father, our Father, hallelujah to God. Thank God for this privilege. Glory to God. Glory to God. In Christ Jesus, we who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. Hallelujah. Who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of perdition between us. You see, we, our sins, uh, we couldn't draw close to God because we had to get rid of our sins. Uh, and the priest had to go in, in a court uh, and make atonement for himself uh, and then for the people. Once in every year! But thank God this man went in once and for all. And after he had done the work, the Bible says he sat down at the right hand of God. And he's now raking intercession for us to with groanings uh, which cannot be uttered. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thank God for the change. Thank God that He's now our mediator. He's our go between. He's our middleman. Hallelujah. So when we come, we just say, Our Father. Our Father. Our Father. Hallelujah. And from verse 18 to verse 20, it says, And for through Him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Hallelujah. Through Him we both have access. By one spirit. That's Jew and Gentile. Yes. Because the Gentile didn't have a chance. Into the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. The Jews were, were the beneficiaries of salvation. Before the cross. Yes. But after Jesus Christ came and died. He broke down yes. that middle perdition. Yes. So both Jew and Gentile. Yes. Have access to God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross. Having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were far off, and to them that were nigh. Yes. For through him yes. we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Amen. Now, therefore, hallelujah, this is our exalted position. Amen. We are no more strangers. Amen. We are no more strangers. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And we are no more foreigners. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, when a person does not belong to a place, uh, He's an alien, he's a foreigner. He takes any old thing and any old thing is thrown and he, he gets pushed around and he doesn't get any benefit and they're not obligated because he's a foreigner. He's a stranger. He's an alien. But thank God today that we're entitled to the things that belong to God. We are no more strangers. Hallelujah. We're entitled to salvation. We're entitled to healing. We're entitled to heaven. Hallelujah. We are tied to all the benefits of Calvary. Hallelujah. We are no more strangers. Hallelujah. We can come in and sit in. We are not strangers. We are not bastards. We are sons and daughters. Hallelujah. In the kingdom of the, of, of the, of the heavenly, heavenly Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come in. Come as you are. Bring your sorrows. Bring your cares. Come just as you are. You don't have to patch up anything. Jesus will receive you just as you are. And he will, he will accept you as a son and as a daughter. Hallelujah. And one thing about God, he doesn't remind you about your past. Because he says, as far as the east is from the west, so far hath he had removed our transgression from, from us. And he has cast them into the sea of forgetfulness. Men will dealt into your past. Yes. Man will tell you who you were. Yes. But thank God you were. But now you are yes. a child of the living God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Yes. The cornerstone of any building is the strength of the building and Jesus Christ is the cornerstone of the church so the church cannot go under the church cannot fail men will fail but the church stands forever 
is a church triumphant. Hallelujah. Jesus says, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus is the chief cornerstone of the church so the people will fail. Ministers can fail. Members of the body of Christ can fail. But Jesus says, the church triumphant. I'm coming back for a church without spot or without wrinkle. Christ will never fail. And the church, there is always a remnant. God will always have a remnant that is left. It was Elijah who says, who put himself in a pity corner and said, poor me. They have killed all the prophets and I only am left. And he opened Elijah's eyes to say, There are 7,000 who have not bowed the knee to Baal. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The church is here to stay. The church is triumphant. The church is victorious. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of the living God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Verse 9 says, For though through him, we both, Jew and Gentile, have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now, therefore, we are no more strangers than foreigners and fellow, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus, these are some of our present spiritual position. Hallelujah. And the future. There is a future for the church of the living God. Their church, there's a future for every child of God. Hallelujah today. We had in the past, before we were born again, that's our past. And we have the present, which is a time of the transformation of our lives. And we have the future, which is the translation. Hallelujah. Of the believer. Or change. Or, 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 or the, 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 the change over of the believer. Or the change, changing of our physical body when we experience the time of translation. A physical quickening, a spiritual quickening at conversion. But a physical quickening will take place uh, when we come to the end uh, of our journey. Yes. And whether we are alive or remain, yes. we shall have that translation, oh, yes. that change over. Yes. Paul in his writing says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We don't have to wait until the day when somebody being buried to highlight this expectation and this hope. We don't have to wait until till, 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 till somebody, your funeral service, to talk about these things. We got to talk about these things and remind ourselves and encouraging ourselves that there's coming a time when this body shall take on change. We shall be free from pain and aches and sicknesses and disease and sin. Hallelujah! And we'll be translated in the very presence of Almighty God. So Paul says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep or die, but we shall all be changed in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Are you looking forward for a change? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, we don't have to wait and to die to wonder where we're gone, going. We can be assured right now that we, whether we are alive or remain or we go, that we shall be changed. Hallelujah. The dead in Christ shall rise first and they that are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet for the Lord himself. I love that. Hallelujah. He's not going to leave it to Mark. To, uh, to, the Michael, to the angels and to the archangels to Michael and to Gabriel He's, the scripture says for the Lord himself hallelujah hallelujah the Lord himself he's not going to leave it to look at chances he's not going to leave it to Jacob Isaac and Abraham the Lord himself hallelujah hallelujah shall descend or come down from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. Hallelujah. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. 
and you just step over here. Ha, ha, ha. I have news for you. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. We're going to say goodbye, old world. Goodbye, I stay no longer with you. Goodbye, pleasures of sin. I stay no longer with you. Hallelujah. I made up my mind. I'm going to go God's way. Hallelujah. The rest of my life. So I say goodbye. Farewell to suffering. Farewell to bad talk. Farewell to hard times. Farewell to times when you can't get your ends meet. Farewell to income tax. Farewell to bills. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Change is coming. Change is coming, my brothers and sisters. Change is coming. It's inevitable. Hallelujah. We just have to prepare ourselves for the change. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. 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 The song says, Time's clock is striking the hour. Jesus will soon appear. We are waiting for our translation. The time is near. Yes, the time is near. When we shall be changed and translated. And this old body of suffering and pain and aches. We're going to put it aside. We're going to throw off this old garment. This old Adamic nature. And put on the new immortal body. The Bible records two men of God who was translated, Enoch and Elijah. Right. Enoch represented the law and Elijah represented the prophets. Yes. I am excited about the translation and the rapture. Yes. The Bible says, I have no seen, no ear heard, neither had it entered into the heart of man yes. the things which God had prepared for them that love him. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. We don't hear anything yet. Oh. John in the Revelation give us an idea what heaven is going to be That's like. Right. But it's not nothing. We don't hear no, you know. Nah. When, 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 when the queen of Sheba came to Solomon. Hallelujah. And he saw the glory of Solomon. He yes. says the half has not been told oh, me. Solomon. Yeah. When I see, when you see the glory of Solomon. Yeah. And when we see the glory of heaven. Yeah. The half. Yeah. We want that the half yeah. of the story. cannot understand if infinity our minds are too limited to understand what heaven will be like hallelujah hallelujah to God hallelujah the heart has not been told us hallelujah 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 he have not entered in the heart of man man think they could exploit the moon and the stars but they don't know the thing yet. They think they know plenty. But hearts are not, you know, your heart even conceived. You and my heart cannot even conceive the things which God had prepared for them that love you. You think I could afford to live hard time on here and go to hell, to burn eternal in hell? No, sir. I want to be with Jesus. It's worth it. It's worth it to serve Jesus. I speak from my heart, says one hymn writer. Do not know all what heaven will be like. Know all that I will be. But the Bible tells me, Beloved, now are we the sons and daughters of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know when you have a no of salvation, we know based on the word of God that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. You and I, Simple human beings, we gonna be like Christ. Yes. Hallelujah, we gonna be like the bodies. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. No wonder Paul said, "Oh, death, where is thy sting? Death not gonna have no control of us no more." Ah, oh, this old robe of flesh, I drop and rise to meet the everlasting Christ. And I said, "Fear well, fear well, old world." Farewell to sin and Satan. Farewell. I'm yes. passing through the crowd. I'll say bye bye. Amen. Bye bye, one. Yes. Bye bye. Yes. So long to pain and aches yes. and suffering and disappointment. The psalmist David says, As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. Yes. Hallelujah to God. There is something to be looked for, to look forward to. 
Thank the Lord. We do not have to dwell on our past. Our present is temporary and we are forgiven. Our present is temporary and we are forgiven. Our future is sure, permanent and everlasting. Hallelujah! Are you looking for the coming of the Lord? Hallelujah! He's coming soon. He's coming soon. Hold on! My sister, hold on, my brother. Hold on, you won't be long now. We can see the signs of the times pointing to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. May God help us today to realize that we had a past, but our past has not affected our present. We are changed. We are transformed. But we have a bright future. And we hope to believe in the Lord and forever live with Him in the glory land. Thank you for joining us and thank you for listening to this timely and powerful message. You have heard the word and now we would like to extend this opportunity to you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you wish to do this, please just say this short prayer after me. The Lord Jesus. I acknowledge that I am a sinner and I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Please forgive me of all of my sins and cleanse me from all my unrighteousness. Save me and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I thank you for answering my prayer and I thank you for saving me. Amen. And if you have said that prayer, congratulations and welcome into the family of Christ. If you would like to contact us or even visit us, the information that you need will be on your screen in a few seconds. Until next time, goodbye. God richly bless you.